Jackie's asked Kate to assist Miss Tuckerman in a Year 11 health and social class. Can you work with Molly at the back? Yeah, right. thanks, Miss. Thank you. Right, what we are going to do today, I want you to write down what you think self-image is, please. So you're coming here for a trial to work here? To see if I want to be a teaching assistant. Uh, what do you do already? I work in a bar. I'd rather stay working at a bar than work in school. I actually even want to work with kids. So I wouldn't. Kids are annoying. I want to find out how you feel about yourselves. So, for example, Molly, I'm an interesting person. Would you say that's not true, usually, or always for you? Um. Not true. Six, I am a kind person. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, school's, like, not my strongest point. Are you confident? Sometimes. I like my appearance. Would you have plastic surgery? Plastic surgery? I'd, I'd get my bum and my boobs done. And my lips. I've had Botox. Botox? I want them. You're brand new out the box. Do you not need Botox at all? My girls, I shall see you later. Got that? Yes. Thanks, Miss. I get my eyebrows done every week. Scouser, <laughs> like. There's something I really do like about Molly. But it's clear she lacks confidence and self-belief. We didn't see Molly last year. She'd just tell parents she was coming into school and then she'd just disappear and go off with students who were a couple of years older than her. And despite every single intervention that we have put in place, she's going to be our lowest achieving student, which doesn't surprise me because she's never here to learn. Why do you miss so much school? Is it the morning time? What is the problem? School environment. Is it like the school environment? I don't like school because immature people. I can be immature myself, but it's just having stupid kids around you. See, it makes me just want to punch me in the face and so back on because I'll get excluded. <laughs> so if you one of your nails broke, I'm sure you were going around the shop to get your nails done, wouldn't you? Yeah, okay. but you can't so get yourself to school. This, this is serious, you know, okay. if you don't call. Uh, this can make back? your life from there oh, to there. And I'm all down. Well, my dream, dream job. It's like, I want to be able to have my own business in there and beauty. Do you you can come in a little bit more? I can totally relate to where she's coming from because I've been there, done it. So it's like a mirror. There isn't much aspiration. So you have to teach the kids and say, you can do whatever you want to do. And it is true, cos I'm living proof of that. I want to be able to look forward to the future, because if you didn't think big, then you're just going to think small, and if you think small, then what about thinking at all? The worst thing a child can ever grow up thinking or feeling is that no-one believes in them. It's about giving them one-to-one -one time and making them believe in themselves. Come on, get it on. The school is absolutely amazing, but teachers are totally overstretched. Yeah, yeah you fool me, kids. I don't want you to be naughty. Oh. It's so hard to deal with each child uniquely. Several times a week, after school GCSE revision classes are held for the year 11s. I'm waiting to see, does Molly turn up for revision? All the teachers are concerned about how much work she's missed. So more than anyone in the whole school, I think Molly needs to come to extra revision. She hasn't shown up. So I'm gonna have to go to the house and find out why. Out of school hours, it's not unusual for the support team at Parkwood to carry out home visits. Hi, yeah. Hello. I just come to have a little chat about Molly. Just to have a quick way as well, so she's getting on. Yeah. Do you know what I'm worried about? I'm worried about Molly's attendance. Oh, I've had some bad times with her past few months. Believe me, it's been a nightmare. 
you're way behind on your lessons to the school, saying, OK, well, you can play catch-up, we can put the lessons on. You're not going. So you're not utilising what they're actually trying to do for you, neither. What is it that makes you not want to go to school? They were like, cos I rang in about older people. With wrong people? Mm. She was staying down at this one girl's house. Mm. I sent the police round there to get her out of the house. She weren't coming home, she was spending all days out. And I just didn't want her to go down that wrong road and mix in with the wrong people. And the only way I could deal with it was to change my hours. So my first job in the morning, I have to get back here for 20 yeah. past eight, and then I have to get her up ready for school, drop her in school, and then off to my second job. Come on, Mum. Your poor mum is working job after job. The least you can do is say to her, do you know what, Mum? Watch this, I'm going to try. Come on, Mum. I should go. You can do this, honestly. 100% you can do it. Yeah. Right, I'm going to go. Oh, Chase, it was lovely to meet you, and thanks for letting me come yeah, and see thank you. you. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. Well Same done. Same to you. Thank you. You, Mrs. Make sure you're in school tomorrow. Molly might not be entrepreneurial, but she reminds me so much of me. I was a tear-away teenager as well. I was 16 and I met a boy. Got pregnant and was absolutely terrified. Everyone had wrote me off and thought, that's it, she's going to have more kids, she's going to be on benefits. And then I had a realisation point. You used to have electricity tokens, and the electricity went in the house and I never had no money to put the lucky back in. And I thought, you know what, this is just not what I'm going to do. This is not how I'm letting my baby grow up. I'm going to get out there, I'm going to make money, and I'm going to make something of myself. But I've had to fight for everything I've got. So if I can change one life, then do you know what? I can make a difference. It's freezing. Successful entrepreneur Kate is over halfway through her time working undercover at Parkwood School in Sheffield. I'm that determined to get that Molly over that gate of a morning that I'm going to the house. I'm going to take her to school myself. Molly has only managed to be on time for school twice this term. Get into school on time, Molly. We're not asking you to perform brain surgery. We're asking you to get in school for 9 o'clock. You're 16. Get out of bed. Good morning! Molly! Tick-tock, tick-tock. 8.42, Molly! She's old enough to know now. Come on, get ready. We've got to be around there at 9 o'clock. No. No. Molly, what are you all? Oh, Mum, I need a charger for that. Eh, uh, get off the door. I've got 5%. I don't care. You're going to have to let me brush my teeth. I'll brush this. No, you'll have to oh. take it away. Yeah, I haven't got time for this. I'll, brush my I'll give you the chewy. I'll give you the chewy. How does it feel actually walking to school on time? Very good. 8.47 and we're nearly there. I'm so proud. Are you? She's here now with a good seven minutes to spare. The fact that Molly is in school attending, it, it's no mean feat. So what he was saying is this is opposites and adjacent, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Kate was the one who went to Molly's, knocked on the door, dragged her out of bed, said, come on. My worry is that I don't know how we're going to cover that without Kate, because the truth is we don't have anyone to go and get Molly every day. We're doing number two, right? Are you doing number two? Yes. Yeah. Right. So what do we do first? It's past nine o'clock, and one of the students hasn't shown up. Is Molly in? Do we know yet? Off sick. OK. Mum's rang in. There's no way she can get in. She's too poorly. She was going to find children with an entrepreneurial skill, but she has found herself drawn to children who've reminded her of Kate, a girl from Liverpool who struggled. Her social conscience has been pricked. Hello. What are you doing here? I've come to see how you're all. Are you sick? How do you feel? All right. You're all definitely sick, aren't you, Mum? I've been, like, sick through my life. Oh, Mum. Are you starting to feel better now? A bit better. So, Mum. Yeah. I haven't been completely honest with you. What do you mean? 
I own quite a few businesses. <laughs> I didn't think you worked in a bar. I own bars. <laughs> you remind me so much of myself when I was young. So when I seen that, I thought, I need to help this girl. I need to show her that she can be whatever she wants to be, because you're a bright girl, Molly. And I've been able to get, yeah, an apprenticeship in a salon in Sheffield. How'd you feel? Excited. And then when you qualify after two years, they'll give you a full-time job. This, the doors are open for you now. Oh, Mal. Thank you. Oh. It is absolutely clear in my mind that without Kate's intervention, Molly would have fallen through the cracks. This is your chance to get out there, get in that job, and prove to everyone that you have got what it takes. I'd feel special. Why would she want to do that for me? Out of everyone she could have chose. Very thankful. Because you don't get a lot of people like that. It's just a chance in a lifetime.